Are you ready, Bing Bong? Bing Bong's ready. Hello, hello, hello. We are here. We are not queer. We're like we're like a two on the Kinsey scale. Um, realistically, um, happy, happy Pride Month to all. I hope you all had a wonderful June. Pride Month is, of course, every month, but it is high time we talked about Miss Chapel Roan on this channel. I did a little look for the occasion. I am obsessed with her looks. I genuinely, like, it is my dream to recreate a Chapel Roan look. I think of the one, if I were to recreate one, I think it would probably be this one from her Tiny Desk concert or this one from, it wasn't Gov Ball. It was... And I found out about her by way of her being announced as the opener on the Olivia Rodrigo tour. I have like kind of heard her name before that, but I really looked into her when she was announced. And so I discovered Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess and I've just been spinning it nonstop ever since. And so what we are going to do is try our very best to rank the songs on the rise and fall of a Midwest princess. Um, we're also going to include Good Luck Babe because how can we talk about Chapel Roan without including that wonderful, wonderful, just like glitter bomb of a single. I absolutely love this record from like the moment I heard it, I was just so incredibly down for every song and I've just kind of come back to it over and over and over again, rediscovering different songs and so, it's gonna be really, 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 really hard to rank this. I decided to do something a little weird, a little different. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a tier ranker. I have the five tiers that I have dubbed different categories that we're gonna go over right now. But then on my TikTok, I'm gonna be doing a different type of ranker. It's kind of like the battle, like song versus song ranker. And it'll spit out my list and I will either agree with it or disagree with it. Um, I'm really using this video to kind of suss out out which of these songs fall where because I do kind of have an idea of the ones that I play more and the ones that I play maybe a little bit less and the ones that I have like special moments that I'm like really obsessed with or like have had like I don't know like special like connections with you know those songs that just have like a little bit of extra um magic and sauce for you personally I know I know those ones but it's it's really hard to put certain ones above certain others because I look at them and I'm like, you're all so beautiful and wonderful. For these purposes, our tiers are going to be starting from the bottom. There probably will not be very many in this tier. We're starting with, don't worry, we're cool. Don't worry, we're cool. These songs are not bad. We have no problems with them at all. We're cool. Um, They're just like not our favorite things in the entire world. We are not like looking forward to putting them on the second we get into the car or the second that we pop our headphones in. Right above that we have the Santa Monica tier. Oh, Santa Monica, you've been too good to me. Now Santa Monica was too good to chapel. However, Santa Monica is not always good to everyone. Um, there's a lot of a lot of car break-ins that I know of personally that happen there, and it's just not always the easiest place um, to hang out or to find parking. Would not recommend going to the beach there. If you're in Southern California and you're trying to go to the beach, um, I mean, yeah, you can walk around like the pier and stuff, but it's very expensive to go on a very old roller coaster and a very old Ferris wheel, um, and it's it's real dirty. It's a real dirty beach. Um, they're not all like that. They're not all like that. Santa Monica, she's not She's not awful. She was too good to chapel, uh, um, even though that's not anywhere near West Hollywood and the Pink Pony Club. But you know, I get like, if you live in West Hollywood, like and you're driving to Santa Monica to like have a time, there are some nice restaurants and stuff there. I get it, I get it. Um, but it's just, it's not the top, my top choice. That's why it is the second to last tier. And then right above that, coming into the color orange, I heard you like magic. I heard you like magic. So these songs are magic. We really, really, really like these songs and we plan on continuing to listen to these songs for the foreseeable. Now the fact that magic is right up in the middle should tell you something about the two above it. Supernova Girls, yes that is a Xenon reference, um, but also a Red Wine Supernova reference. These songs are supernovas. Um, they are giant, super 
bursting, exploding stars that simply cannot and will not be ignored. And they don't get ignored. I play them. I play them constantly. I played them today even because I listened through this entire album today in preparation for this video. And then the top tier we have in all caps because I feel like that's the way Chapel would want it. Sonically <laughs> iconic. These songs have touched my life. I reached out and these songs touched me and I, I was blue and they were red and they touched me and suddenly I was a lilac sky. Wrong artist, but still you get the vibe. Um, I was changed by these songs and I will never forget them for that. And I continue to be changed by them every single time I listen to them because they are just that good. Um, and we're going to talk about why as we go through them. So let's get into it. Let's start at the top. All right, so I put you guys down here so we can do this together. Okay, so we're starting with Feminineomenon immediately, sonically iconic. This song was the second song that I heard from Miss Chaperone and I immediately was like drawn and obsessed to the campiness of it, the musical theaterness of it, the dirt bikes, the ladies, you know what I mean? And you know what you need. And so does he. But does it happen? And like, I just picture like a big like crowd of ladies in a gymnasium and chapel jumping up on the bleachers and being like, ladies, we know what we need, but do they do it? And they're like, no. Like, it's just, oh, it's just giving like cafeteria riot to me in a way that I absolutely love. There's something so mean girls about it. And then also like the dirt bikes from the music video just absolutely kills me. The dirt bike motif of this is just so cool and like campy and like perfect. Like the revving up after the, and I love before every chorus, how she progressively gets more angry and more aggressive about screaming. Did you hear me play the fucking beat? When I am simply not feeling it, if I force myself to just really commit to the bit um, and be present with this song and like do it, I, I'm feeling a little bit more by the end. I'm feeling it a little bit more and I'm a little bit more enthusiastic about life just a little bit. So many of these songs are just like so incredibly like perfect fodder um for like a dance routine um and this this among them i've seen so many people doing like incredible like pole dancing routines i'm so sure there are so many like dance teachers that are like so excited to like make um routines to these songs um but yeah feminine phenomenon sonically iconic red wine supernova also sonically iconic i this was the first song that i heard from miss chapel and it took me until it took me an embarrassingly long time, I'm not gonna lie to you, um, to get the like, I got a wand and a rabbit joke. Um, I got it, don't worry. Um, but like, it took me like a couple of listens um, because I was just thinking about so many other things. And I was like, you heard you like magic? I got a wand and a rabbit. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like that's <laughs> super out of pocket. But then I was like, <gasps> She has a king size bed and a wand and a rabbit. So let's get freaky with the wand and the rabbit. Ah, like, and if you just got it too, that's okay. It's genius. Chapel is so good about just throwing something out there and being like, yeah, no, that's a vibe. You get what I mean? And like, especially for song titles, super graphic, ultra modern girl. Understood. Does it make sense? It makes sense because you, under you, you understand, you get the vibe, you catch the aura. Um, and so therefore, to me, it makes sense. Same with Red Wine Supernova, a girl who is, I'm picturing someone who is a red wine girly. I can see it. I feel the vibe. And whether or not she has dark hair, she has a dark hair girl. She has a brunette vibe, um, whether or not she's actually a brunette. And then a supernova. She's a supernova of a girly. And then you hear more about it in the song. She describes her. She was a playboy of Bridget Bardot. She told me things I didn't know. And she did it right there out on the deck, put her canine teeth in the side of my neck, the vampire bite imagery of that. I just picture like a big like lipstick stain with like little vampire um, 
bites i know there's a music video for this um but before i saw before i saw it, that's what i pictured um i love 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 the song in the second i heard it and i replayed it over and over and over again see now this is getting hard after midnight i love this song and i feel like this is a really unpopular opinion um to love this song because i think a lot of people find this song boring and unspecial but there is a fun beat to it that just really gets me going and gets me through the entirety of the song so quickly that I like don't even realize it's over. Um, Hot to go, I feel the same way about. The song just starts and then I'm like doing it, we're in it, and then all of a sudden it's over. Um, there are so many good lyrics in it, not to mention I love the, I love a little drama because um, like same like i feel like being that's so relatable you're not saying you want to be a part of it but you do love you do love just a little bit of um a little bit of spice a little bit of a plot um to watch um let's start a bar fight like just like living for the drama a little bit that's such a vibe i also like how she describes her mom she's like nothing good happens when it's late and you're dancing alone she's in my head saying it's not attractive that's such a like i don't know like boomer mom phrase like it's not attractive to wear that dress and red lipstick oh you look like a trollop like i could just i can totally picture that vibe but also her being like this is what i wanted this is what i like and so you're you're saying it's not attractive well guess what i love it Ugh, i just picture such like a fun messy night out and so i feel like it's really unpopular of me to put this in sonically iconic but ooh, well no we'll do it in supernova girls because i i really really like that song i really really like that song and i think we're gonna be really picky about what we put in sonically iconic coffee i love coffee the first time i listened to it i was like oh no this song's gonna hurt and it did and it hurt in such a smart way and it changes and progresses as the song goes on and i i don't know if this is about new york city but i can just picture all of the places she's talking about and i find it interesting it's where i met your family is where she met her family the same place that they hooked in the bathroom during casual when they went to dinner with the, the parents at the table. Um, I don't know, probably not, but that is definitely a memory that would be hard to return to the place of. Um, but I am a big fan of coffee. I have to be in like not too deeply into my feelings um, to listen to it because um, it will make me sad because it is kind of a bummer, but I do really enjoy it and I definitely don't skip it so we're gonna put it in I heard you like magic because I definitely play all of these other like more boppy ones a little bit more but I definitely really really like coffee um, casual and icon we're gonna have to put that up in supernova girls casual is there are so many there's just so much to like about this song the way she gets very like Alanis Morissette at the end um she has such like an Alanis quality to her how she like flips through her break and almost does this like yodeling thing like Alanis and she does it at the end of casual when she says fuck you in the bathroom when we went to dinner your parents at the table you wonder why I'm better and the way she screams you can go to hell at the end is so good not to mention the chorus and just the phrase knee deep in the past passenger seat and just like the sensuality of saying and you're eating me out and like calling it that like oral pleasure and oral sex like I feel like that's just not spoken about as much in songs or like said like that by women and so like I love that she's just like doing it because that is like honestly how most girls get off and it's just like such an iconic song it gets stuck in my head so often um and she sets up the situation of this relationship so well at the beginning i thought you thought of me better i've heard so many rumors that i'm just the girl that you bang on your couch but then she goes through and she talks about all these intimate experiences and she's like is it casual now i know i know we said no attachment. I know those are the words we said, but we're pretty fucking attached. Um, I'm literally on the phone with like your sister talking her down through a crisis life. And I'm being invited to your mom's house in Long Beach. Like I don't know, this seemed pretty attached. I thought you were going to show me off to your friends, but fuck me, I guess. But actually, fuck you. Super graphic, ultra modern girl. I love the beginning of this i love specific moments in this but i think i love specific moments more than i love the song itself this song is a dancing song to me this is a club song to me this is a song that i don't want to sing to it's a song that i want to like dance to and so it's not even like a driving song it's a like up getting ready like moving around um cleaning song and so i don't 
play it necessarily as much as Feminine Omenon and Red Wine Supernova. I probably play it about as much as After Midnight and Casual. Yeah. We're leaving the planet and you can't come. Like it's giving no boys allowed. Like getting on like a spaceship and like before you leave, like hanging a girls only sign <laughs> on the outside of the door. That's such an early 2000s um, like hyper pop vibe and Chapel's really capturing that in so many of her songs. And I think that's, it's the confessions of a teenage drama queen kind of vibe that among other things that I think people are so incredibly attracted to and so many of her songs um and i really 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 see it here i really see it it kind of is sprinkled in throughout this record like this record has so many different ingredients and they kind of show through and pop up throughout like you can tell she's talked about how she has like gone and showed like her producer like this is what i want this part to sound like and given examples of parts of past songs and things past artists did that she thought were dope and she was like this is like what i want to be giving in this moment and she really like achieved that i feel like every single moment that she because these songs are full of so many like moments and just like clear like chapel roan like kind of like theater kid big drag hyper pop energy campy energy but there's also so much sincerity and real feelings and real pain and lust and discovery and freedom and experience and like life lived within these two um and so those ingredients come out in different ways each one of these songs is like a new cookie um that has like different bits that have been mixed into it from all of those wonderful spices that chapel has to sprinkle in here i'm going way too far with this and we have so many more songs left hot to go sonically iconic also one of the first songs that i heard from her i learned the dance i heard red wine supernova and then feminine Omenon and then hot to go um and i learned the dance and i've been doing it ever since um it's just so it's another one of those songs that like it just it starts and then like it just like it brings you through it like the beat just never drops and the energy never drops and like it was one of those songs that like i learned the words to so quickly without realizing it because it's just so catchy in the verses and then on top of that you have the chorus that is like i've heard people say it's this generation's ymca and i fully support and agree but also there are those like cute little like moments of personality i love like the talk singing of it it reminds me a little bit of um moments on guts and then at the end she's like you coming home with me that's hot is it hot i'm hot we'll call a cab let's go like it's and like you can just feel like the sweatiness and i love feeling that like being in a club and just like dancing and like feeling how hot and like a million degrees and sweaty you are but just like living in it and having fun anyway and being like Ugh, i am hot you're hot this is hot like it's just it's so it's so fun and then the idea of like hot to go being something that's like written on a pizza box and that kind of like connects back to the vibe of like get a hat like papa john um and feminine omenon i don't know if other people have made these connections um um, but I have. This is what I've been sitting here doing. Are we halfway through? Oh my gosh, we're halfway through. This is actually, I have much more distinct thoughts than I thought I did. I kinked this karma, big fan. And I think this one is so clever too. But do I listen to it as much? Yeah, and I do listen to it more than super graphic, definitely. In fact, you know what? I think we're gonna have to put super graphic down here with coffee and picture because when i look at these i listen to after midnight casual and my kink is karma more than super graphic ultra modern and i listen to super graphic ultra modern probably just like two ticks more than coffee picture you i love the masturbation song um we have guilty as sin we can add picture you to our masturbation song playlist and i love it it is slow and it's very horny and so if we're not in a slow horny mood sometimes we skip it if we're listening to the whole album though we do let it play because we like it so i think we're gonna do santa monica um no it's definitely not at the bottom um because 
these ones are a little bit above that, but I do still very much like it. Kaleidoscope is my one in the bottom tier. Um, if you are a Kaleidoscope stan, I, I'm i sorry and I, I, I respect you. I really, really do. And I think that if it were on any other album, it might not be in the bottom, but it's really just the one song that like I probably consistently skip um, just because I feel like I get... It is the only song on this album that I feel like I get the energy that I get from it elsewhere in other songs um, in my like Spotify, um, if that makes sense. All of the other ones, I feel like I can only get what I get from them in this song. Kaleidoscope, I feel like I can get that vibe other places. Um, and so sometimes I skip it. Um, but if I'm listening to the whole album, if I'm just like playing it through from beginning to end, I do, I do let it play. Um, so I have, I have heard it. I enjoy it. Um, I think I love a kaleidoscope. Um, I think that really fits in with the mood of this album and like the colors, um, and the glitter and the dreaminess of it. Pink Pony Club, ugh, the 2020 single that never got the attention it freaking deserved. I am going to put Pink Pony Club with Super Graphic and Coffee because I listen to it again, but maybe not as much as the six that are above it. Those six that are above it, I listen to ad nauseum. It's really, really hard to say I play anything more than those six songs. I think um, maybe the only other ones that might make it in there are coming up naked in manhattan i love the like like the sound effects i love the production on this album the phone call at the beginning of this one is so cute and so relatable of someone like having a crush and like wanting to see someone but also like not wanting to like take up too much of their time or be like too needy or whatever hi it's travel i know you just landed and you're probably busy but i would love to see you so Call me when you can. I feel like I'm like 15 again. Um, and I love how it highlights like the sexual discovery experience of her like figuring out that she was a lesbian and like taking that step into like a first sexual experience with another girl and like portraying that in such a badass song I think is amazing. I think I'm gonna have to put Naked in Manhattan up in Sonically Iconic because there's just nothing like it. Like it is such a fun, sexy song. I, I can't put it below any of the ones that are in Sonic by Iconic because it really is just as good as all of those. So California, big fan. Um, I love the emotion in the song. I'm also from California. And so I do kind of get what she's talking about, but I also am from parts of California that are not necessarily how she is describing. And so I think she would like them. We have brown leaves there. Um, but I, when I am in the mood to swing to a slower song, I do definitely play this one. Um, it is a little bit of a bummer. So I play it for some reason, casual is a bummer too, but there's some empowerment in it and some bite to it. And so I think I played a little bit more than the other slow ones. So I'm going to put it and I heard you like magic because I am big fan guilty pleasure i really really like it is the least played song on this album on spotify apparently like by the numbers but the thing about that is it's the it's the last one on the album and so if people are just pressing play on the album listening to it from top to bottom like i do um plenty of the time i feel like it's just that like people don't always get there and i really really like it i think it's so different and i like all of these songs are so different like i could say that about all of them guilty pleasure the thing that is making me not put it in Supernova Girls is that I can only think of the chorus and I love the chorus but for some reason the rest of the song isn't coming to me right now and I can't say that about anything any of the other songs and so I think I have to put it in I Heard You Like Magic but I definitely do listen to it more than Picture You which is interesting um okay okay I think that's gonna be my ranking and then if I had to put Oh God, do I have to order them within the tiers? Do I have to? I'm gonna, okay. Well, let's do, let's start from the bottom. Um, this, okay, I think that looks right. And, then that okay so that is our midwest princess ranking and then oh good luck babe 
Where are we gonna put Good Luck Babe? Good Luck Babe is sonically iconic. I think it would probably go between Hot To Go and Red Wine Supernova because it is just as iconic as Hot To Go. And I listen to it probably just as much as Hot To Go and Red Wine Supernova and Phenomenon and Naked in Manhattan. Yeah, it's sonically iconic and it's number two right after Hot To Go. Okay, okay, we've worked that out and I haven't listened to Subway enough to rank it because it's not actually on Spotify. Um, it's like on podcasts um, and stuff on Spotify. You know how you do that. But All right. Well, that was a lot smoother than um, I thought it was going to be. I, yeah, no, we were worried, but I really had fun talking about this album with you guys. Let me know what your faves from the Rise and Fall of the Midwest Princess are. If you got to see Chapel um, over the past few months, whether it was at the Guts tour um, like last year, or it was at one of the music festival performances over these past few months, or if you have tickets to see her in the coming months. Um, I have been watching and streaming. I cannot get enough of her looks. I cannot get enough of her interviews. I cannot get enough of her performances. I am obsessed. She has quickly skyrocketed into my top five artists along with Lana and Taylor, um, which is saying something. Her spot is there. It is very, very secure. Um, and she only has one album. So that's saying a lot. Let me know what you guys think of Chapel, what your faves are. If you have not checked her out, absolutely go do. Um, here are some recommendations for songs to listen to first based on my description of them. If you liked this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end, feel free to like it. It makes my heart soar. And subscribe if you like to see more videos. I have plenty more coming. It's going to be very, very fun so stick around click on the bell if you would like to get a little notification every time I post so you can like add it to your watch later and make sure to see each and every video that I have coming out for you guys every single week I've been having such a great time thank you guys so much for subscribing um the subscribers have just been going up and up and up a little bit more um every week and that just it really really makes my day so thank you guys so much I do see every comment and every little like and every subscribe and it makes an impact so thank you thank you thank you once again for being here and I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Oh, and check out the um, song battle ranker version on TikTok and follow me there on TikTok. I do kind of more silly, um, less formal things there. So yeah.